Depression can be a tricky thing to navigate and even harder to diagnose. According to the CDC, depression is major contributors to mortality, morbidity, and even economic costs in the United States. And one in five adults suffers from it. Joining us live is Dr. Bob Bullen, Chief of Staff for the Menninger Clinic and also with Baylor College of Medicine to talk more about the signs to look out for and how it's affecting Americans on all levels. Good morning. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us this morning. Thanks for having me. I want to start with the way that depression can mask itself to make sure people might realize, wait, I'm not just feeling down for a little bit. Maybe, maybe this is something more serious. Right. I mean, in a way, it's the problem is that depression is such a common word. We all know what it means or we think we do. And we've all felt depressed at some point, uh, usually meaning sad or just kind of feeling lonely or something like that. Uh, when, when we talk about clinical depression, the sort of thing that we treat as psychiatrists, that's quite something different. Uh, depression is a disease. It affects really all parts of the, the body. Even though we think of it as a mood disease, we probably should think more broadly as a, a disease of the entire body. So yes, it can make us feel sad, but it can also make us feel just apathetic and not really caring about anything. It can make us feel to the point where we just take no pleasure in things that we normally would enjoy. But it also can f affect other parts of our body. It can affect uh, the way we think. Uh, it can make us feel as if we're almost demented in a way, or even psychotic. Uh, and it can affect other parts of our body, which is why it can be sometimes hard to spot. People often first go for depression to their primary care doctor because of some other problem, for instance, and maybe fatigue or insomnia or uh, increased pain in their body, uh, because really it can affect just about anything in the way we feel. Well, when we hear that number one in five and you just picture a room of 100 people and you realize how sure. many people are there, people need to realize they're not alone and they're not the only ones feeling that way. Is it that prevalent in children and teens as well? It is. Now, the study that the CDC just put out was an adult study, mm -hmm. uh, 18 and older, but they also put on another report earlier this year uh, that talked about uh, the fact that perhaps more than half of um, teen girls, for example, uh, have at some point uh, experienced hopelessness or sadness, um, uh, it, which may explain sort of the you know, risk that we're seeing in teens of increased suicide. Um, so, yeah, it seems to increase in every group, and there's other reports of increasing even in children as well. When is it time um, for you want people to realize that this is a serious problem and maybe they do need to seek help and not try to, to heal, so to speak, on their own? Right. I mean, there's still this sort of pressure that some of us feel that this is just an emotional thing. We can't see it. It's not like a broken leg. It's not like diabetes that we can measure. Um, so we kind of just have this feeling that it's just something that's inside us and we should it will either get better or we can sometimes help it. But that's just not true. I mean, the nature of depression is that it sticks around. It's a chronic disease. Even if it gets better for a bit, uh, it often comes back and people suffer with this throughout their lives. So it's something, fortunately, that doctors are asking about more often, and it's something that we really should be able to discuss with them. Mm -hmm. I do love that, that mental health experts are working more with our PCPs. I think that's a, an incredible uh, thing to happen. All right, let's talk about the long-term impact if left untreated, because as you said, it tends to come and go, and it can really mess with somebody's life. Absolutely. So it can affect every part of their lives, and of course, not just themselves, but their families as well. Um, but also, it affects your physical health. Uh, people who have depression die earlier, um, often not necessarily, I mean, obviously, suicide is a, remains a big problem. We know that. But it can also affect other physical health issues as well. Uh, people with depression are more likely to die, for example, of cardiac disease. Um, and you can imagine how if you're feeling constantly down and stressed, this is going to take effect on you physically. It's going to take effect on your heart. All right. Dr. Bob Bullen, just one last question for you, and that is to how to approach that family member, what to say to them if you see them going through this and they don't want help or, or they're just ignoring it. Uh, my experience is that people often do respond well when someone expresses concern. Uh, 
the, the notion that we're all just going to get defensive isn't necessarily true. Uh, do reach out to other people. Often they want that help and get them to see a professional. Okay, thank you for your time from Meniger this morning. Just an honor to talk to you and really be able to share this information with our viewers today. Pleasure, thank you.